You are listening to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast presented by Realm of the Mist Entertainment with your host, John Tolley. Welcome to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. We are coming to you today from, as always, deep within the Outer Rim, far beyond the watchful eyes of the Galactic Empire. Joining me today, as always, is Mr. Ray Rumsey. Ray, how are you today? I'm doing very well. Hello out there in audio land. I, of course, am your pilot for this journey through the Outer Rim, John Mark Tolley. And, uh, yeah, we got a ton of Star Wars news, didn't we, man? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of stuff coming out very uh, recently. Yes, D20 uh, was just this past weekend. And, um, of course, that's the new, the, when uh, Disney, you know, kind of goes over all the new stuff they got coming out. And Star Wars was a big, big part of that. In fact... I'd venture to say that there was more news and that came out of the D20 D23 than um, than did even celebration. You know, this seemed like there was a lot of like really really huge news coming out of this one. Oh yeah. Um, um, of course, you know, we finally we get to get final confirmation that Ewan McGregor will be ter- returning as. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, finally, yeah. some confirmation. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, he uh, showed up at at, uh, at D23, and they made the official announcement there that they're going to be doing a, a series on their streaming service, an Obi-Wan TV series. So um, how do you feel about a TV series as compared to a movie? Um. Well, it's kind of a double-edged sword in my opinion because on the one hand, now they only have half-hour to hour time blocks in which they got to try and cram information for us to be able to process. But but it also, doing it that way, if it runs for an entire season, which let's say is... 10 to 15 episodes i mean you're looking at way more content than you would out of a two and a half hour movie yeah yeah with a tv series you can get a lot more in depth and in detail i think right as far as storytelling goes um and you can really flesh out whereas with a movie you have two hours to get you know all this information in Mm -hmm. and you know for people to you know you know digest it and figure it out um and right. you can you don't need to cram everything in like you know basically that's what i was saying was you don't have to cram everything in into that short period of time you can you know let it ride out and you know follow the story along you know week by week um as it goes on right the only yeah. uh Kind of difference, I suppose, or, or uh, po- problematicness <laughs> is with the movie, uh, if it does poorly in the box office or whatever, then it doesn't matter. The movie's already out. You can always go yeah. pick up the, the Blu-ray or DVD or whatever. Um, the movie's out there. It doesn't matter how it how it plays out in the long run. Whereas yeah. with a TV so- show, if by the fourth, fifth, episode ratings aren't doing that good and the you know provider decides that they're going to pull the plug on it that's it you're yeah. left hanging well i think that's one thing that that helped actually with it being on the disney streaming service is they have a little bit more of a cushion i feel um with stuff like that because they're not necessarily as reliant on what the ratings are as say a network tv show would be so i think i think being on a streaming service definitely helps um kind of cushion any and i don't think there's going to be any issues with um because this is something people have been wanting and clamoring for for a long time so unless it's you know the script is just horrible and 
um, you know, something weird happens and they get like the worst script writer in the history of the world to write the script. I don't think it's going to be that. I mean, I definitely, th- I think if we get, we'll definitely get at least one season. Right. Uh, you know, I don't think you're going to see a flop with an Obi-Wan TV series with, especially with uh, Ewan McGregor. Which I totally agree with, but we also have a lot of other Star Wars stuff that's kind of competing for its attention at the same time, so that's what I'm concerned mm-hmm. about. Well, again, that's one of the good things about the streaming ser- about having on a streaming service is you don't necessarily have a either or. You know, it's not something like, oh, The Mandalorian's on Tuesday, and oh, but so is Obi Wan. Which one am I going to watch now? <laughs> right. <laughs> It's, oh, here's the entire season of The Mandalorian. I'll watch that, you know, this week. Oh, here's the entire season of Obi-Wan. I'll watch this th- that this week. You know, it's not necessarily an either or. It's a, you know, you can watch both. This is very true. You know, that's that's definitely one of the, definitely one of the big pluses of having um, a streaming service is, you know, you're not necessarily... And, I'm not sure how the um, Disney streaming service is set up yet. I unfortunately I do not have it at the moment, um, so I'm not sure how they have it set up. If they have it set up that each episode just comes out like a normal TV series, where each episode comes out each week, and you watch it day by day, but and even if they did, I'm sure Disney would not put both shows, you know, right competing with each other. They'd put them on probably different days of the week I would think oh I I think that that would probably be pretty smart on their uh, on their end and I, I do I agree I think that's probably what they would do yeah um, and speaking of we just mentioned it we also got the uh, first full, full trailer for the Mandalorian and have you had a chance to look at that one yet I did um, I watched that one and um, I'm very intrigued by the uh the line um bounty hunting is a complicated profession Mm -hmm. that that kind of is what drew me in yeah it definitely has a very western vibe to it oh absolutely yeah Um, you know very much you know in the vein of those old spaghetti westerns if you (laughs) any remember any of the um clint eastwood westerns clint eastwood yeah it definitely has that type of a feel to it, and uh, um, even it's it's even on from what I saw most of the uh, uh, trailer from it, from what I remember anyway um, was a, a desert planet, you know, and we're mm-hmm. we're pretty used to those uh, with Tatooine yeah. and uh, with yeah. Jakku. I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to be one of those two, ja- Jakku or. Um, Tatooine right right just you know at least at the beginning just to get people kind of a something that you know something that they're used to although because you know that the Obi-Wan movie uh, TV series is going to be set in Tatooine right um, because it's going to be you know most likely filling in the gap between the end of episode three up through um, episode four Mm -hmm. so well unless they unless they go the route of um you know let's what would be another good one to compare so let's say without going into detail about it if they go the route of smallville where we see a young obi-wan and his training and even if they did it in flashbacks mm -hmm. you know and they spend the first season kind of showing you the trials of (laughs) obi-wan and then getting up to the only the only problem with this, and it's not that Disney doesn't have the money to do that, but would they be willing to spend all that money to de-age Ewan McGregor? Because they true. Have to, because if you look at Ewan McGregor now compared to Ewan McGregor in 1999, he has aged. Right. Uh, it's real, I mean, he's he's gotten <laughs> older. Right. Everybody right. does. And yeah. You'd have to then you'd have to find. Okay, do you try and get um, Qui Gon back? Do you try to get that? Um, who played Qui Gon? Darn it! 
<laughs> well, I mean, they do some crazy stuff with C- CGI now, so they might yeah, be able just to give them a call and be like, hey, we're going to do a CGI of you. We'll pay you royalties yeah. for your face. <laughs> but again, you know, you run into issues with that, too. Again, that's a lot of money. Right. That's a lot of that's a lot of work. And when you're trying to do that week by week, every, you know, each week do a new episode unless they do all of it at one time and then, you know, just, you know, release every, you know, the whole series. Mm -hmm. But even then you're talking about a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of work doing that. Whereas if you just set it in the time period of like, like I said before, between the end of the prequels to the original trilogy, the only real special effects you have are the ones that you would have anyway, like for the aliens and the starships and the lightsaber and the, um, all that stuff. (laughs) Well, as, as the, uh, original Obi-Wan said, the laser sword. (laughs) Yes. The laser sword. (laughs) But yeah, I, I agree. I think it probably will be, Obi-Wan on Tatooine just have given Luke over and then he's got to deal with Inquisitors and, you know, uh, sand people and and things of that nature. And protecting Luke, of course. Yeah. So I guess we'll we'll just have to, we'll have to see on that one. Yeah, I, I was disappointed. I was hoping at least once when he came out that he would have said, you know, walked up on stage and just said, Hello there. Oh yeah, that would have been great. <laughs> I would have yes, just say hello there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um, also, I guess I heard we got this little teaser thing for some other sci-fi movie that's coming out in December. I don't know if you heard about it. Oh, um, yeah, you know, I, I can't yeah. remember the name of it off the top of my uh, head. Rise of Walkers. Yeah, Texas so, Ranger? Yes, the ro- yeah. Walkers of the Sky. Uh, yeah, something like that. Man. <laughs> no, we're, we're just joking. We're just teasing, of course. Absolutely. Uh, we got a teaser trailer. They called it a special look, but it was basically another teaser trailer for Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to break this thing down piece by piece, give our opinions on everything we saw and just kind of talk about what we think is going to happen. So uh, the trailer starts out with a uh, – the first thing you hear is that is that music. And what I found interesting is they kind of did similar to what they did in the first teaser. If you remember the first teaser, they had Leia's theme playing throughout. A variation right. of Leia's theme playing throughout. Mm-hmm. And this one, they had a variation of Luke's theme, which is one of my favorite themes in Star Wars. I love Luke's theme. I have it as my ringtone, in fact, on my phone. <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> but hearing that music and then seeing those double that double sun. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, what? I mean, when you first saw that, what was the? Fr- I mean, when you first saw that double sun, what was the first thing that went through your mind? Well, the very first thing I thought was, oh, you know, we're we're back at the beginning. The story has come full circle. circle. Yeah, I kind of thought that too. And Man. it felt it felt like home. Like seeing that and right after that seeing seeing young the, the young Luke standing on on the the the, the sand hill mm-hmm. looking out to the, into the desert. It felt like I'm back home. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I mean, like, you think back to it, it kind of harkens back to when you were younger and you're sitting there watching Star Wars for the very first time. Yeah. That's that's what it made me think of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you, know, you get that really look back through the you know, nostalgic look back as you see all, you know, first you see the... Uh, the Star Wars Trinity. You see Le- Luke, Leia, and Han. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just like reintroducing the you know us to old friends. Right. Yep. It's like you know these are 
these are the people you remember you know it's and each one of them was w the first time you saw them or one of the first times you saw them yeah you know, yeah you know play it was on the uh the tanit of four you know at han it was in the mosaicly cantina you know luke she was he was back at the farmstead you know each one was right you know, it, kind of, it was yeah. kind of like um to me anyway it it was almost like the most iconic moment that you remember seeing them. Yes. Yes. And then it kind of goes through the, there was, you know, the, the whole story, you know, and someone, I heard someone point this out that they put it in a way that how I think people think they didn't do it in chronological order of episode one through six. Right. If you notice that, they did it. Original trilogy, then prequels, and then new trilogy. Right, yeah, exactly. They did it you in know. the order that the movies came out. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, exactly, exactly. And almost in the order that Disney was kind of saying, okay, this is how you need to watch the movies. <laughs> yeah, what do they call that, machete style? <laughs> machete style. Well, actually, machete style is um, four and five. You end on five with I'm your father. Then you do a, the flashback to the prequels and do one, two, three to find out how Anakin became Darth Vader. And then you go to episode seven to get, or episode six to get the redemption story. Ah, <laughs> and there you have it, folks. If you haven't done it yet, that's a good way to watch it right there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, there's really no bad way to watch Star Wars. This is true. This is true. Unless you like Jar Jar, and then you're just wrong. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's, there's no wrong answers in Star Wars. That's right. That's right. Um, and, oh, of course, then you get the you know the line from Luke of, you know, we, the, we've taught you all we know. Right. And you can, then you kind of see, you know, the history, almost the history of the Jedi. You see, you know young Obi-Wan and um, Qui-Gon fighting Darth Maul. You see the Clone War starting. You see the rise of the Empire. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the rise of the First Order and the rise of the Resistance. And just all these things happening. And, of course, any the first new scene you see, of course, is once again on, it looks kind of like a desert planet, but that city, as they're rounding the hill, and you see that, um, in the in the valley down below, that city with all the all the colors and fireworks going off, and you know that's it's going to be interesting to see what that is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, is that going to be like their version of precisely? Mos you know, all this. You mm. know. Hmm, that's a good thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are some things? I mean, what are what are what's one thing new things that you saw that really uh, caught your eye? Um, well, you know, the, one of the things that kind of because they did they they went through all of the um, older. I'm gonna I'm gonna use air quotes on that older because um, even though they're the new. The new trilogy, they still, um, it, it's not the newest movie. So the the uh, melted face of um, Mask of Darth Vader and the, yeah. you know, just that part of the recap. But then, yeah. but then, like you said, they got into the new movie stuff. And one of the things that stu stood out to me was that you see uh, Princess Leia. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like a, a jungle planet, if memory serves correctly. Yes. And, oh, you know. And that's that's general organa to you, sir. <laughs> correct. <laughs> um, but that but that's kind of interesting that, that they would continue her into the movie, you know. Um, well, much respect well, to the actress, you know. Well, from what I've heard, uh each movie is supposed to be one of the original trilogy. They're supposed to be the anchor point of it. So like of the new trilogy. So like the first one, Han was the anchor point for that one. Okay. 
he was like the anchor to Back to the Past. Luke was supposed to be the anchor for Last Jedi, and Leia was supposed to be the anchor for this movie. And unfortunately, mm. she died, but died. But they still had already um, had a bunch of. I guess they're going to be using a lot of unused footage from Last Jedi and even maybe even um, Force Awakens. Okay, well that, that's cool. Um, you know, to do flashback scenes and stuff like that, because um, they didn't want to do a you know a recast. Because I'm sorry, you can't recast Carrie Fisher. Oh, absolutely not. No um, way. Um, and they didn't want to do a like they did with uh, on Rogue One with um, Tarkin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. didn't want to do that because, you know, that just gets into really weird territory, especially, you know, when it's this, uh, you know, e- even though it's been a couple of years, it's still been pretty soon, you know, her death hasn't been that long that long ago that I think, you know, if you're going to do that, you need to wait, you know, several years before you start thinking about bringing, you know, someone, you know, someone like that back in that type of that type of way i think yeah. at least yeah i agree with that i i would have to agree yeah it was it was kind of neat yeah though seeing uh seeing carrie again and mm-hmm. um you know i think we've talked about it on the show before she was a lot of guys first crush yeah yeah absolutely you know everybody everybody remembers the slave girl outfit <laughs> every guy remembers that yeah um, and she was also, you know, kind of in a way between her and, um, you know, between, you know, Star, you know, Star Wars, you know, Princess Leia, uh, Ripley from Aliens, they kind of paved the way um, for strong female characters. Right. Yep. During I would agree of, with that. Know, you, know, you had movies like Star Wars, which had a strong, you know, female character. Aliens, which had a strong female character. Terminator, mm-hmm. Sarah Connor. Yeah. Um, Halloween uh, had a strong female character. You know, those people kind of. And I think you know you can kind of look at Princess Leia and Carrie Fisher as being one of the first in that kind of line. You know, because she came out around the same time that all of those movies came out, but I think they might've come out a little bit before that. So, you know, she's like really much a trailblazer in that sense. So, yeah. And it's good, you know, to see, you know, that even my daughter, you know, looks up to princess Leia and when we're playing star Wars, she wants to be princess Leia. Right. Yeah. That's what, yeah, that's who she wants to be. She wants to be princess Leia. Mm-hmm. Um, so another, um, interesting scene you know i'm just i'm going right along um yeah you know I'm, i've actually while we were talking i pulled it up just so that i can kind of go through it and take oh, my yeah. time to discuss it and the scene right after that we see the um x-wings come in and they all go into attack formation yes um, you know the oh. the iconic x you yes, know attack the, posture the the S foil, like yeah. S was an attack position, and then and seeing the um, the Falcon the, right next to it, the Falcon, and then the Mon Cal cruisers coming along, and right, just oh, and then immediately following that, you see all of those star destroyers just all lined up, ready to go, and it's and did you notice something about them though? You're... Did you notice what's different about them? No, I do not notice what's different. Those are not new First Order Star Destroyers. Oh, yeah, those are, those are definitely Imperial, Imperial class. yes. Those are Imperial class. Those are old-style Imperial class. So oh, here's my question, kind of throwing this out. Could we be seeing Thrawn? You know, a... Thrawn's lost fleet. Given that the, the background of that is kind of like a bluish tint, it really kind of does... Um for for shadow that almost or um yeah. you know it, yeah because I, for those who didn't know and haven't watched rebels at the end of rebels uh ezra manages to basically hijack all of thron's fleet and launch it into 
hyperspace into the unknown regions, to going into the unknown regions of space. Um, and that's where that series leaves off with um, Ahsoka and um, some of the others going off into the unknown regions to look for uh, Ezra and Thrawn and that fleet. So it's possible we could see, um, uh, you know, not only the return of Thrawn, we could see Ahsoka. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We could see uh, other characters from Rebels show up. You never know. That would be Um, very, very, very interesting. I mean, we've already had name drops, uh, if you remember, in um, Rogue One, the name of uh, General Syndulla Mm -hmm. was was name dropped. Uh, We saw Chopper, the droid from there, and we also saw the ghost. Right. A couple times uh, in shot, so um, we know that they were around during that time and you know could theoretically still be alive i mean if luke was alive um then it stands to you know to reason that you know these other characters would probably be still alive too right especially someone like ezra who would have been luke's age so that would um, be that that would just be mind-blowing to see all of that come together yeah but here's another, and we've talked about the uh, again. We've discussed this before in previous episodes. That what if Thrawn's fleet is not there to necessarily help the First Order? Right. Yeah. I mean, what if they're there? Because uh, if you remember, at the end of Last Jedi, they had sent out a distress beacon. Yeah. What if it's Thrawn that is coming to the rescue? Right. Or what, what if they were able to defeat Thrawn, and this is actually Ahsoka leading the mm, fleet? That could, that's an interesting thing, too. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really, really... That part's going to be really interesting, just because just seeing that fleet was just chills up, up my spine. Right. That was, that was a very, very strong image that they they painted there (laughs) with a lot of question marks (laughs) yeah well and that was the thing about this is this just like the past the previous trailer it it gave us more questions than it answered right right which when you think back to the and and we kind of discussed this on our um messages um for the podcast in general um, just behind the scenes stuff when it all got posted up and I said well if you think back to when J.J. J. Abrams directed the, the first uh, of the new trilogy mm-hmm. he he likes to give us these trailers that have misleading information mm-hmm. I mean we see Boyega running around with a lightsaber for most of the trailer and I remember almost everybody I knew that saw it was saying, "Oh no, nope, he's the new he's he's the next Jedi. He that's that's the next guy we're going to see." And then you sit down and watch the movie, you're like, "Whoa, okay, never mind. He has no idea what he's doing with that thing." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it that kind of makes me wonder how much oh, of this is smoke and mirrors and misdirection and things like that. Oh, I'm sure a lot of it is going to be smoke and mirrors and misdirection and um, scenes that will be spli- that are spliced together to think to make you think that they're together, but actually they're at completely different parts of the movie. Uh, they might even do a a Rogue One. If you remember Rogue One. Almost none of the scenes that were in the trailer for Rogue One, in fact, none of the scenes that were in the trailer for Rogue, Rogue One were actually in the movie. Right, yeah. None of them. Which would you know, be very, very sad if that was the case with this movie. Yeah, yeah. Or, but, I mean, I, there'll be scenes, but like it, but, you know, I don't know. Um, though I did want to see that scene, with, going back to Rogue One, I always did want to see that scene of what what, what happened when that... Uh, Tie fighter came up as she was walking up the the gangplank. Yeah, uh, they were like, "Okay, how did she get out of that one?" <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember, um, you know, it's kind of an off 
side tangent, if you will, um, but still somewhat related. Back when um, episodes one, two, and three were coming out, um, more specifically when three was getting ready to come out, they were releasing the trailers, and me and my friends were doing exactly what we're doing right now. And we were just picking and tearing and trying to fan theory it up and figure out what we were, what we could glean from the trailer, you know. And it actually, all of it, just about, I would say probably 90% of our fan theory ideas ended up being true. So when the new movie came out and we tried to do that again and the movie actually came out, we watched it, we were dumbfounded. We were like, wow, we were way off. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of what I'm feeling is happening with this one. I mean, you and I aren't really trying to trying to spoil it or figure out what's going to happen. We're no. just kind of going over it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, we're giving our opinions and our thoughts of what may or may not happen. But right. Um, but th- I have read some forums out there that people have jumped all over it already and they're trying to figure it out. And number one, I I would like to say, number one, guys, it's a movie. And gals, yeah. not excluding here. It, it's, it's a movie. It's for entertainment. Like, you really have to have that suspension of belief. Um, so it just... It's meant to be fun. Let's not suck the fun out of it. That, that's my first yeah. disclaimer to it. Second of all, just look back to the first trailer. I mean, this is J.J. Abrams again. We're probably going to get duped into believing something, and then it's going to turn around on us. Yeah. One thing I noticed, and I noticed this with the the first trailer too, and this trailer, that this movie looks much more epic in its scale than last jedi did oh yeah i, I would agree with that it last definitely jedi does very much bottled and even though a lot of it was in space it seemed very very contained like, yeah you were, you were either just on the ship or you know you went to the um, the casino planet mm-hmm. and then you were on um a train that you know training uh with luke and ray but it was very much contained in those areas. You know, you didn't see a lot of the, you know, other play. This one seems very much very grand and yeah, epic. yeah. It's it's like okay, we're gonna finish this up. We're gonna do it in the most grandiose way possible. And yeah. and they are really trying. And it, you know, it's got me excited. Yeah. Um, so uh, kind of moving on, um, the next yeah. scene that we see is, is one that really has people kind of up in arms almost about, um, C-3PO coming, you know, rising up with the red eyes. What do you yeah, think I that's guess, all about? Well, the way I look at it, there are a few possibilities. One, this is again, a misdirect. Okay. Um, that you know they're trying to make it look like oh C-3PO is evil it could just be that he has new implants and these implants happen to turn his eyes red um it could also be that this is not 3PO ah uh-huh. it could be that this is an assassin droid that's a very good point um because if you remember back in the old EU uh, some of the assassin droids played in the games looked a lot like the old, like the protocol droids. Yeah. They had the same basic design. Um, so it could be that that's what this is. This is just a protocol. This is just an assassin droid. It could also be that uh, his program, 3PO's program has been compromised. You know, you never, this is one of the things that, you know, there's so many things that this could be. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I personally, I think this is a situation where people are making a mountain out of molehill and just putting a lot more thought into this than what really there is. Yeah, I mean, 
he let's let's face the reality of this is that uh c-3po is a droid and of mm-hmm. of all of the droids um he really he did have some emotion which was typically fear <laughs> or an, yeah. or anxiety yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um he's still he's he's a a robot um he's a droid and so yeah. i don't think yeah. he has the capacity to be light side or dark side i that's my thoughts um, on it i that's hard to tell because um, we have had force sensitive droids before. I mean, yeah, you know, but as far as light side or dark side, I mean that you know again that goes down to programming. Right, you can always change the programming programming to, you know, whatever you want. So right, but but I think I think C three PO by default would just be neutral. <laughs> yeah. You just be like, okay, okay, oh, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> uh, I I could imagine that would be a horrible fight to be in. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. So um, the scene directly after that, we see a um, giant red laser beam um, smashing into a planet's surface, and I'm reminded of. Um, uh, the last <laughs> weapon of mass destruction. Are we seeing another Death Star? Uh, that's kind of what I'm wondering. Are we? Are we seeing another? And you know, if we do, that's going to get a lot of the haters up in arms. Like, oh, you're just redoing the Return of the Jedi. It's another super weapon. It's another. Um, and w- I mean, what do you think of the idea of there possibly being another super weapon? I. I think it think is super weapons are overdone. Well, personally, yes, I think super weapons are overdone and they always seem to have one gigantic flaw that they the heroes are able to overcome, which, you know, that's understandable given, you know, what, yeah. how how you need the story to go. However, it seems to be something that if if I was in a position of power and I said, hmm, my super weapons keep getting destroyed, well, maybe you should stop building them. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of my thought on it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So. Uh, you know, not long after that, of course, we see... Um, it looks like we're going to get more scenes of ray training uh, on that jungle planet. It mm-hmm. looks a lot like that's or forest planet. I can't really tell. Like that is definitely more training of ray. So the question is, who's training her? That's a very good she, question. If she's training, who's doing the training and how are they doing it? Is this Force Ghost? Is this Luke coming back as a Force Ghost to help train Ray? And will we see other Force Ghosts? That's a very valid question. I mean, we see her throwing the the lightsaber, which you know that's been seen in a lot of the Star Wars video games a few times. Um, yeah. So that it's very possible that she's just being trained by Force Ghosts. Yeah. And what do you think the over under is that we see Anakin? Oh, I the horse ghost. I honestly believe 100% that we're going to see Anakin. Mm. But which Anakin, I don't know. Are we going to see the original Anakin, which was the older man, or will we see the younger Anakin from the reboot? I think most likely we'll we'll see the younger Anakin. Um just because I think in a lot of ways that would make more sense because that's the that's the Anakin that most of the younger audience knows. That's the one we've seen the most of. This is true. And so, yeah, but, I yeah. feel like that is and what people are going to recognize. It would be easier, I think, to get uh, now that, especially now that Hayden Christensen has kind of been welcomed back into the Star Wars community and has kind of gotten back into it and been to... Um, the celebrations and gone to the comic cons and has kind of 
really embraced once again you know that that whole st- the whole Star Wars family once again is like I said been kind of welcomed back in right um, that would make the most sense is just to get Hayden Christensen um, well he had like the... he had such a, a almost negative connotation with the fan base because everybody got hung up on such being oh such a bad actor oh they were so whiny blah 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 but then after a while people kind of got over it and now he's back in the same personally yeah. i really really yeah episode episode two okay I, I just i chalk that up to um i don't want to say bad I, writing bad but writing. but poor writing uh but writing. episode three i think he pulled off the transformation and the fall he pulled that off well, so well and even though uh, episode two is definitely my least favorite of the Star Wars movies. It still has one of the best acted scenes I think in the in in the entire saga, and that is the scene after the death of his mother. Yeah, where he kill where he slaughters the sand people. He goes through so many emotions, and you you see him going through that that you know, that emotional turmoil. And see everything going through it, you know, of, you know, of uh, sorrow, you know, the sorrow of losing his mom, anger, hatred, fear, all of those in, I mean, just a, just a few minutes without saying a word. Oh, yeah. You just, just you see it all on his face and eyes and all, he's. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you know, you just see everything go there and he doesn't say a word. It's like, okay, that is acting. That's um, you know, amazing, um, and and you feel for him. You really do. You you kind of think to yourself, "What would I do?" Yeah. yeah, I would do the same thing. Yeah, of course. You know, shortly shortly after that, we have the uh, "I hate sand." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I but can, uh, but can you blame him? I mean, the poor guy. Yeah, yeah. it does. It is coarse, and it does get everywhere. <laughs> I mean, he went through so much on the desert planet that I, if I was him, I probably wouldn't want to go back either. Yeah. Um, we kind of got back on the Anakin story, didn't Anakin? Uh, <laughs> you, you just can't, anyway. you can't talk Star Wars without Anakin. But yeah, so, so then yeah. the, the final, well, not the final scene, but the other scene that really has people just going is the scene with uh quote unquote dark ray well let's go before that let's go to the um the fight on the that ocean on what looks to be a piece of the death star oh yes yep we have that that scene and of course the uh voiceover of the senate himself old palpy <laughs> Yeah, uh, saying that your journey nears its end. Yeah, you know, starting to see your journey, and of course it goes to the next scene after that nears its end. But uh, it looks like we're going to see that uh, you know final epic showdown between Ray and Kylo. Yes, absolutely. Um, but the question you know, is, just... but the question is, who is the Senate <laughs> talking to? Would he be talking to Kylo? Oh. Or would he be talking to Ray? Mm. Because he, it could that, be implicative that uh, Kylo has almost reached the end of his journey. Yeah, that that's another. That could be another big misdirection from uh, JJ. Right. Of uh, you know, because it seems the way the trailer is shown, and I think the way you're meant to perceive it is he's talking about Ray. Mm-hmm. Because of course you get that scene at the end, which we will discuss here in greater detail uh, in a minute. But I definitely think that you're meant to think it's Ray, but then again, is this just all misdirection? Right. That and that's been my whole thing this whole time is I'm trying to, I'm trying to think about it of the opposite of what everybody else has been thinking about it, just mm. to. Just to try and see if it fits. And in, in this particular instance, I think it does. Because this whole time, Kylo's wanted nothing but to be 
like Vader or better than Vader or continue the legacy of Vader. And this, Mm -hmm. this is the quote unquote last Jedi. If he were to destroy her, the Sith would rule. Mm. Yes. There would be no one to stand up to them as far as we've seen and we're concerned. Yeah. So I kind of wonder if old Palps is talking to Kylo. That is always a possibility. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a a possibility and almost would make, make sense. But then again, it could be a redirect, a misdirection within a misdirection. <laughs> yeah, this is it true. Could be, it could be one of those things that he's thinking, all right, I know if I do this, they're going to think this. But... Because they say he's got, he's probably thinking, you know, I if I do this, they're gonna think that it's obviously Kylo because I do the misdirection, but really it's the misdirection of that. It's really been Ray all the time. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. But if he, um, but if he's thinking that, then he would also know that we would think that he would do. <laughs> you know that whole skit. <laughs> it's Star, yeah, it's Star Warsception. <laughs> Star, yes, exactly. But no, I mean, it really does pose a very good question for either character. I mean, it, mm-hmm. e- either way, it it's just amazing. Yeah. And, and the fact that they're bringing him back raises so many other questions in and of itself. You know, and I mean, we, yeah. we, how, we how, talked how... about, we had a whole episode about him on our podcast. If you all go back, I think it was episode 45 Mm-hmm. When we were getting into Palpatine and um, his effect on the Clone Wars. And we kind of touched on it with Anakin about yeah. the fan theory of him cre- like being so powerful that he killed his former master, Plagueis, and was able to control Metachlorians and things. Um, so the fact that he's still alive isn't super surprising. But the fact that he's able to assert so much control, yeah, is what's surprising to me. Definitely, definitely. Um, well, then moving on, the very last scene that you see, yes, is of course, the one that everyone's talking about. Yes, the dark ray. <laughs> the shortest, shortest scene out of all of them. <laughs> um, and. Yeah, I go. Mean, go ahead. Again, there's so much speculation of this. First of all, what did you think of the lightsaber? Um, I think it's extremely dangerous and should not be tried at home. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the way that it is hinged, um, as opposed to like a twist together, um, from what from what I know most double-bladed lightsabers are able to be taken apart at at the middle and able to be used as uh, dual-wielding lightsabers. Um, yeah. But, and this is, this is just what initially pops into my head when I see that scene, the fact that it's a red one and it, it's not a solid beam like we usually... It's kind of red, and it's not as ragged as Kylo's, but it, it does have some... Kylo's. yeah. It has a little bit of, you know, uh, fluidness to it. So yeah. what I kind of wonder is maybe, and, and this is a stretch, but what if somehow she was able to come into the possession of Darth Maul's broken double-bladed lifesaver in which the mm. kyber crystal was broken, and that's why mm. it has such a crazy blade on it. That's that's interesting. That's interesting. I th- one of my theories is, and I was just thinking about this too, is we it could be seeing her version of Luke's trip into the dark side cave on Dagobah. Yes, if you in Empire, where he had to face basically himself. Face his greatest fear, face his greatest, in it, you know, enemy, and that turned out to be, you know, first he thought it was Darth Vader, but then it turned out to be, and it would make sense in that case that you would see a, 
you know, if she was facing herself, so to speak, in this force vision, that the blade would be, whether it's a force vision like that or just a force vision of a possible future for her. Oh. Because the only, because the only red light, red blade that she's seen has been, has looked like Kylo's with the way it kind of shimmers and crackles like that. So that would be her her only idea yeah. of what a red lightsaber would look uh, what you know would be like so obviously yeah that's very it true that, it would take that form you know yeah oh wow i did yeah because like, when luke went into the cave he he had to come to grips with that and you know see the dark side of himself so yeah. i'm wondering yeah that's a very good huh you know what? I need to look at that scene real quick too because um, I know it's a very short scene, but I think there might be one more thing that we can glean from this. Okay. Um, and uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but it almost looks like there's maybe uh, some kind of snow or... Um, Something that like it's a it, it to me I get the feeling that it's a, a cold place, and this kind of going along with what you're saying, if you recall back in um, the uh, yeah I want to say it was the Clone Wars, the young Padawans go to the ice planet to obtain their Kyber crystals. Mm. So what if she's trying to obtain her kyber crystal and it is showing her the darkness within herself? Mm. So kind of ties well, into what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. There's definitely a, a... There's there's a lot that could happen here and and it could just be Something that they found and it's a disguise so that she can try and get close to Kylo again. It might be that, just that easy. It, yeah, I mean, yeah, it could. There's so many things it could be. Um, I still want to know how she would use that lightsaber when it's in its folded stage. <laughs> that, that does not look like it would be the easiest thing to no i imagine that would be highly impractical <laughs> yeah yeah it's like what what <laughs> yeah i'm not sure she'd be able to use it that way kind of like yeah kind of like an x-wing i don't think would be very formidable when it's in uh folded when its wings are folded it, it would probably work but not well yeah uh well i just got my uh five minute notice so we're gonna be wrapping things up here okay sounds good to me and um so final thoughts on the teaser trailer summed up in one word wow um, uh, I, think, I think you took the words right out of my mouth this is gonna be probably one of the most epic and wild movies that we've seen in a while yeah. So I'm definitely going to be there to see it. So we, we'll definitely be talking about it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, one quick question before we go. Okay. Does this beat Endgame? Hmm. That's a very good question. Um. Man, I don't know. I, I feel like that would be up to everybody's individual interpretations. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I definitely think this is going to be one of those movies where we're going to go into it thinking that we know the answers and be completely wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. But we're all going to be highly satisfied at the end. <laughs> All right. Well, do you have your weekly uh, question for us this week? Um, since we were kind of covering the D23 and it wasn't our normal-ish podcast, I, I don't have a question for anybody today, only to, All right. you know, have fun. And I look forward to reading more theories and hopefully people that have listened to us kind of get a little bit of a 
imaginative spur and come up with some new ones. I'd like to see and hear from them. Definitely, definitely. Of course, uh, you can hear us in all the shows here on Realm of the Mist at anchor.fm. Just go to anchor.fm slash new realm of the mist. And uh, that's their one stop shop for all your podcast needs uh, for pretty much any show. Uh, you can also find us on pretty much wherever else podcasts are heard Spotify, Owl Podcast, uh, Stitcher, and like I said, pretty much everywhere else. Of course, YouTube.com. Uh, if you're on um, Apple Podcasts, give us a five star review. We all appreciate that. Remember to like and subscribe if you're on YouTube and like us on um, Anchor. If you want to uh, help us out financially, which we would greatly appreciate, we, of course, have a um, we, of course, have the Anchor um, support tab, which you can help us out there. And, of course, we also have, uh, help me out there, dude. Some t-shirts. Yeah, we have t-shirts. T-shirts. Yeah. Buy the t-shirts. Yeah, uh, they're, they're very good. Very good t-shirts. I, yes. I'm going to get one coming to me here shortly. Yes, definitely. Uh, other than that, you can find us on, uh, find this show on Facebook at um, War of the Stars. Just search War of the Stars uh, fan page. Mm -hmm. And on mm -hmm. Facebook, uh, also the Realm of the Mist fan page on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook at Mark Tolly, and you can find our John Mark Tolly, and you can find uh, me on Twitter on uh, John Mark Tolly One. You can also find Realm of the Mist on Twitter at Realm of the Mist Entertainment. And if you want to get a hold of us, get a hold of us there, or email us at realm of the miss entertainment at gmail.com and yeah. ray where can they find you uh you can find more of me uh, uh doing the dungeon master duties for uh chronicles of the lost realm that's about to be starting season two tomorrow so make sure to check it out um i post the link to our facebook page um at chronicles of the lost realm just type it into the search bar it'll take you right there and we are also on Instagram under the same name. All right. All right. Well, that will wrap it up for this week. Uh, join us next week as we will get back to our regularly scheduled program as we will continue our look at The Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, remember, this isn't just my Star Wars. This isn't just your Star Wars. This is our Star Wars. As always, may the Force be with you.